Hi, welcome. It is the Cockpit Stop. It is Wednesday, the 10th of November. Uh, I hope you're having a good week so far. So yesterday was what I think is really the unofficial EV day for COP26. And why? Well, there were some pretty significant events around the theme of electric vehicles. And I find this fascinating because in Paris, EVs weren't really much of a feature. Um, there were some shuttle buses that we could get from uh, the main train station to Le Bourget Airport, and there were some demonstrations, and maybe some very elite uh, people could could get a, uh, a Renault Zoe to take them into town if they were very lucky. But now EVs are everywhere. They are the solution, and there's there's considerable EV campaigns have been building over the years since Paris. And one particular one for COP26 was called Route Zero and the Climate Group hosted an entire day event with very high level speakers to come and uh, discuss all angles of EV adoption. At the same time, a lot of different consultancies are very much focusing on e-mobility now. And I also got to attend one of the Accenture events that was recorded online to uh, to bring together different parts of the, the value chain in EV and charging to to explore how those business models are evolving. So what did I learn? Well, four key things for you today. Uh, number one, in terms of the automotives, they are certainly looking quite deeply at decarbonisation across the whole of their business, across the whole supply chain. It's not just about providing a zero emission vehicle, it is actually about production and the, uh, the supply chain um, their suppliers as well so they're looking at all all scopes and looking at scope 3 upstream as well and um, we we heard from Daimler and Volvo today I also saw a very similar presentation from Audi last week at the Green Tech Festival about their strategy to look at every single different part of how they can have the most influence to decarbonize and achieve carbon neutrality as a business as soon as possible there is um, uh, a consideration of where they can make faster shifts in other industries so some of the hard to abate sectors include steel and we know that automotive are a major customer for the steel industry so we do see some some interesting synergy there and I expect more announcements to come from the world of steel that are going to help automotive and heavy transport decarbonize too. Uh, number two, uh, focus on your end users. So it's not just about deciding how to organise yourself as an organisation if you are going to switch your fleet over to electric. It's actually about thinking about the drivers who are going to be, um, who are going to be using those vehicles ultimately. So we heard from various fleets uh, including Openreach and EDF and uh, these kind of fleets that have a lot of vans, a lot of uh, light commercial ve vehicles, LCVs. And for them, actually working with champions within their organizations, working with their employees to realize, yeah, you know what, this, this is a nice solution. Actually, I really like this electric vehicle. It's a much more relaxing experience. It actually means that people want to use them more, want to adopt new practices that's going to fit charging into their day-to-day -day regimes rather than form a barrier and have to go through this major cultural change problem that often businesses struggle with when there's changes in organization. So really focus on, on, on the end users and that includes your employees, not just perhaps the end customer if you're selling uh, cars to private individuals. That I found very interesting. Thirdly, I found this most fascinating, is that we don't just look to the west, to the north, for the best practice in EVs. Actually, it's a, a great example of where we can look around the world for, for other inspiration. Here I would mention uh, Colombia and specifically Bogota. Bogota has a um, a bus rapid transit system uh, called the Transmillennio. It was built over the year 2000, hence that name. And that has been really successful in enabling people to uh, move all across the city with 
a, a fair, fairly priced public transport so solution. So it's really good for equity in an urban area. Now they've been transitioning their fleet slowly over to electric and actually that transition has gone much faster than I realised. Uh, they've got 483 buses that are fully electric in their fleet now. So no, no, not only is it really good social uh, policy to have really good buses, it's also decarbonising and improving air quality in the city too. I really recommend taking a look at what Bogota are doing, as well as other cities across Latin America for really good positive in, uh, um, uh, examples of of sustainable transport. Another thing that Bogota is very famous for is the Ciclovia. Since the 1970s, they've been closing off the major roads in Bogota for uh, cyclists and runners and rollerbladers. And that's every Sunday and it encourages active travel and gets people out and gets people reclaiming their roads quite, quite literally. And that has spread to other cities and you'll find that across across Europe, across North America too, but really the first one was in Bogota. And finally, I wanted to mention about finance. Now, I think there were some teasers today that there's gonna be a lot more announcements around finance coming specifically for transport over the remainder of COP26. I think this is clearly going to be um, a major stimulus for for, for pushing faster switches to electrification and therefore faster decarbonisation of certain sectors. So just a, a little heads up that there should be things for things like buses or heavy transport that we're going to see announcement over probably today because today is a transport day at COP26. There is an awful lot going on in all sectors. So there are going to be announcements about maritime, about aviation, about heavy vehicles, uh, and not just about electric cars, as we team, uh, tend to, to focus on. So watch out on the news for all of that, and I will do my best to provide a full synthesis of all the key um, things that have, have been announced and what that means for you in your individual uh, transport sectors over the coming day or two. So enjoy your Wednesday. Thanks for thanks for watching.